Hey, welcome back to FHN. We are obviously now here in the Bay Lab. We're going to talk about these flashers. You know, there's a lot of different options out there on the market. I mean, we have our Gibbs, we got our Pro Troll, we got our Short Bus Flasher. I got my Hotspot. Uh, let's see, I got my Silver Horde Metal Flasher. I mean, I have a lot of options. And or I can buy the manufactured breakaway style flasher, which has become so popular. Again, because the whole thing is you fight the fish, not the flasher. Well, I kind of like that idea because oftentimes when using rotators and uh, or our 360 flashers and barbless hooks, you can have that uh, moment where you go slack for a second, it goes the uh, opposite direction of that flasher, and simply those hooks come out of that fish. Many fish have been lost simply because the fish changes directions and that flasher cuts in. Um, next thing you know, that fish is off. So disconnect that flasher, disengage that big looping rotation off of that thing. That way you're fighting a straight line from tip of rod to the hooks embedded into the jaw of that fish. And how do we get there? Well, we're going to make it real easy for you. I can take any one of these flashers, and a lot of them I have, and convert them into a breakaway for literally pennies on the dollar. So first and foremost, I'm going to go and purchase a few items that I need, okay? So when it comes to the needed equipment to make this happen, first you're going to walk into your Home Depot or your Lowe's, and you're going to find this uh, basically 50 feet uh, I think you can get it in 25 foot rolls also, but it's so doggone cheap, $4.50, they're about 50 feet of quarter inch vinyl uh, tubing. This is water line for irrigation systems, for your, uh, for your yards, for your hanging plants, for things like that. Uh, works very well. It's got a quarter inch inside diameter, and this stuff is somewhat rigid but flexible, and uh, it doesn't crack, and it works really well for the item I'm going to use it for. Next, you're going to find yourself some of these double connector sleeves. These are the crimp-ons. Slide the line through them, double it back on itself. Very popular and use them in a multitude of different uh, options. This is what I use to secure the 150 pound line that we're going to talk about in a second. You're also going to need a number of these size 3 barrel swivels. Okay, uh, Pretty simple. You can get them in a, in a 100 plus pack. For I think this 144 pack, these Berkeleys were nine and a half, ten bucks uh, for uh, way more than I probably need. But uh, again, not very expensive when you're using one unit per uh, flasher. Then I'm going to step up and find some 150 pound monofilament. This happens to be the Berkeley Big Game uh, Trilene, 150 pound uh, strength because of the diameter and the strength that I want to perform the task of what uh, it is slated to do. So as I look at the flashers in front of me here, this, uh, this Gibbs, you know, the, the one thing, there's a lot of commonalities and then there's differences in all these flashers. This Gibbs, this Pro Troll, this Short Bus, it's all about how they make these connections on the end of the flasher. Now, the one thing we want to remember is you got to make sure you orient it the right side up to make this work. The shovel end going down that you pull is what digs into the water to make this thing rotate. So make sure you build this on the back side of this flasher on the back side of that front shovel end that digs down to cause it to spin. Um, the differences on these, a lot of them are secured in the front with a solid ring and, a, and some type of ball bearing swivel, pretty common. On the back side here, they do things a little bit different in how they connect their swivel and their clips. Uh, short bus simply uses large oversized um, uh, dual locks and ball bearing swivels and down here they'll have a dual lock. They don't have any grommets on the inside, that doesn't matter, but you just have to figure out a way to change the dragging end of this rotator or this uh, 360 flasher on where your uh, presentation leader is going to connect, okay? And it's pretty simple to do that. Here's an example of a uh, Silver Horde Gold Star. This is the trailing end of the, the, rig, the end that we will hook the, the leader to. And they put that big, nice uh, barrel swivel on there. And then they have that twist on where you simply roll that swivel onto there, locks your leader in place. Pretty handy to simply uh, switch out your presentation off the back end of that, that, back end of that flasher. 
uh, what I need to do is take a perfectly good flasher like that and I'm removing that bottom piece. I want to leave this uh, main barrel swivel, this large oversized barrel swivel on there that I can slide this tubing onto and that begins the transformation. Now again, I'm taking a perfectly good tail end off of that thing and willfully cutting it off just so I can put this adapter piece on there. So how do I take each one of these and convert them into a breakaway flasher by using these simple components that we talked about. So looking at this uh, hotspot, you'll see this is pretty much, this is the ones I started with because they're the easiest to work with. You got your ball bearing swivel in your, in your solid ring at the top end. Remember uh, the face of this, the shovel ends down because that's your digging side. This is the, the uh, heel of it that gives it a, a rotation. They go with a solid ring on the bottom end barrel swivel simply to a lock clip very easy to convert this one as a starting point and the rest of them you can figure out because you'll kind of duplicate this area right in here so all we do is we take our uh, we take our hot spot and I'm removing this clip off of that swivel okay that gets taken away so all I have is a swivel I'm taking a piece of our tubing again it's a quarter inch uh, inside diameter and you force it onto this oversized swivel and I'm here to tell you once it's on that piece of the swivel that is not the part that's going to disconnect on you that stays on there extremely well you don't have to worry about that something else to think about too is that as these are working in the water and they're doing their rotation okay the pulling end on it is the front edge that's where the tension on this device is this trailer piece doesn't have to have a lot of strength to it as far as what it's holding presentation wise and don't have to worry about it slipping out or falsely triggering because it's truly just dragging uh, uh, you know a spinner if you want to but a hoochie a small spoon um, some type of uh, you know you can drag bait behind them obviously lots of folks do but the drag on this is not substantial enough that's gonna pop these things off so you don't get a lot of false uh, false uh, sets off of this thing because it does hold together pretty well. So I'm going to force that tube onto there. It's going to hold on that swivel just fine. Then I'm going to take the clip here. All right, I'm going to pick up one of my um, size three barrel swivels and I'm going to put that on the clip. Okay, pretty simple. Now we're going to wedge this into your tubing. That size three fits into that quarter inch really well. That end of it right there is your release point. Okay, if you think about it, your leader is going to be clipped onto here with a barrel swivel going to your leader. This is the part that pulls out. And how do we make sure that it stays in contact with our uh, main line <clears throat> that is connected to our swivel up here? It's simple. I'm going to take 15 inches of my 150 pound test. I'm going to grab one of my dual crimps and simply feed that on. Okay, now we're going to go through the ring on here. Okay, not the swivel. We're going to go through the ring just so it has a nice stable anchor point on that. Run that back through. Now, I don't need to leave a lot of tail off of here uh, coming out. This thing is not going to slip. And if I have that extra tail hanging out of there, that's just more to grab, just more to get in your way, more to get spun up. So we're going to get that right down nice and tight. Take a majority of the loop out of that as well. You don't need it. It just needs to be snugged right up to it. Now I'm going to hold that, take a pair of pliers. I'm going to crimp on that nice and tight. I also like to take the dike cutters on this thing and put a little extra crimp twice on that metal just to make sure it kind of bites into that line really good. Now don't push it too hard because you don't want to cut through there, but it puts a nice bite pattern into this thing. That is not going to come out. That's the first side of it, okay? That's anchored to that solid ring. That's not coming off. Now the next part of this, you're going to take another press-on um, dual sleeve here. Now the key point here this is going to go through your release swivel. It does serves no purpose if you hook it to this ring, to this swivel, somehow try to fashion it into here, which ain't gonna happen. You're looking for the eye that is forward. The reason I stick this in that tube first is so that I only have one eye exposed, and that's the one that it's gonna go in. Don't hook it to the clip, 
okay, it has to go into this swivel. So we're going to put it through that swivel and now just simply back on itself. Okay, get that in there. And again, I don't need, um, you know, a big tail hanging off of there. What I want to do is I want to measure this now. I usually cut 15 inches or so, so I have enough slack. Now, if this is tight um, right now as it is, it's not going to pull out of this release, okay? You have to gauge this thing to make sure that you have slack in this system, all right? You have to allow the tension to be pulled at the swivel. And by doing that, that gives me the ability to stretch it past the uh, keeper here. Um, again, if that's tight, then that's just pulling directly on that. That doesn't do anything. I have to extend it to where there's enough slack that when a fish hits your presentation off the end of this uh, clip, it's going to pull that swivel out of that tube. So typically 15 inches on most of these. I found that 16 inches on your uh, so Silver Horde Gold Star Metal Flasher is going to do a better job. So now we're just going to crimp that one uh, closed as well. Okay, and put a little crimp on there with my diagonal cutter portion. Again, I like that to bite in there really well. That's pretty much it. That's your jumper that goes from the front part of that shovel back to that connector piece. And when a fish hits this and basically rips and pulls line, especially if they change direction on you, okay, that is simply going to pull out of that piece. Now see, that all stays connected and hangs on the end. This is now your direct line uh, to your main line and directly to your presentation, which happens to be buried in the jaw of a nice 25 pound Chinook. It doesn't take a lot to pull that out of there. It takes a pretty good pop to pull it out of there. Your small fish may not trigger it, uh, but you're not gonna have a lot of false uh, releases also, which is nice because the false releases are a pain in the butt because you constantly gotta bring gear in, bring your downrigger up, reset. I have found that that doesn't really happen with this method. That little tube, actually, when you do drop that into Puget Sound, it actually tightens up a little bit because that water makes it cold and gets a little, little tighter there. So, and then to reset it, uh, all I have to do is basically you have that swivel on there, the only end that's exposed, that swivel pops right back into that tube. You just set it in there and there you are. That thing is set to go. Hook it to your mainline clip, hook your presentation on the end of that, put it out there, drop your downrigger, get that thing rolling. And when that fish hits and pops that sucker out of there, you're going to be fighting the fish and not the flasher pretty much works every time I have yet to have a failure. And uh, you may have a little investment here. You're gonna have, you know, four and a half bucks into your 50 feet of tubing, which will last you forever. I don't know how many you can make out of that because I gave David 15 feet of it and I, he's yet to tell me how many he can make. Uh, these, these cramps don't cost all that much. Again, 10 bucks for your 145 uh, size three swivels. Can't remember the price on that Berkeley line. I've had it for a couple years, so. Do yourself a favor, little investment up front. You're going to make a ton of these things. You can build a release on every one of your flashers if you choose to do so. It's going to work fantastic. You don't have to pay 10, 12, 15 bucks for a single unit to put on your non release flasher. Now you have a way to do it in your own garage. And as uh, often said by a good friend of ours, more fish are caught in the garage than anywhere else on the planet. And I'm a believer in that. So hopefully that helps you out. A couple little uh, bonus tips here for you that you can cheat the system and find a way to do it yourself. And uh, let us know on our Facebook page or message us up. Let us know if you've converted them. Throw your pictures up there so we can see your artwork. And then I want to see the pictures of the fish you're catching with those release flashers when you get out on the water and find success. Okay, that'll do it for us here in the bait lab. We're going to jump back in the studio after this break. We're going to talk with Matthew Messing, messing around, fishing charters, was out on the water today for the opener. Area 9, Area 10 had a pretty fantastic morning uh, is what I'm hearing. Curious to see what he has to say about how long that fishery will go and uh, what we can anticipate on size of Chinook that's coming out of Area 10. We'll do that. We come back right here after this break on FHN. <laughs> 